A boy is sitting in a class and is bullied by a student sitting right behind him. The guy who is bullying him pastes a drawing on his back on which a boy is drawn and a loser is written on it. The guy who is being bullied looks behind and stares at the guy who is a bully. Then the guy who is bullying him asks him what is he looking at and asks again if he wants him to beat him up. The guy keeps staring at him and the guy who keeps bullying him says that if he does not turn around, he will hit him. The guy being bullied gets scared and turns around and all of them laugh at him because he is scared and he cannot fight them back. Then he drags his pen on the table because he is angry but cannot fight them back and takes his anger out on the pen. Then the guy sitting behind him says to another loser in the class to draw another drawing for him because this one wasn't that funny. And then he tells him that if he doesn't make this drawing funny, then he is going to hit him instead of the guy he is bullying right now. The guy who is being bullied continuously is named Juhua. Then the one who is making the drawings tells him that he will put his level best and will draw the funniest drawing ever. Juhuan is angry, and the guy who is bullying him asks him if he is angry to make fun of him. Juhuan does not reply and he keeps looking down on the table to ignore him but the guy who is bullying him says to him that if he is angry then he should fight back. Juhuan still does not reply to him, but he keeps bullying him again and again and then tells him to hit him back and then abuses him. Jiwen cannot take it anymore and he is too angry but he is not capable to fight him back as he is scared of him and then the guy who is bullying him tells him to come see him later. After listening to this Jiwen thinks about the past once he was sitting in a class reading his book and the same guy beat him up and threw him in the trash and after that, all of them stood there and laughed at him for a while. Due to this flashback, Jiwen gets scared and angry at the same time so he looks at the teacher and then gets up in the class. Everyone starts to look at him and then the teacher asks him what is wrong with him so he tells her that Suzang Nim is bullying him. Then he says that he is being bullied and hit continuously more than three times a week. After listening to this the teacher asks him with shock what is he talking about so he says that Suzang Nim took 10,75,300 ones from him so far. Then he says that after giving so much money to him even now he is still bullied by him and then he shows the drawing Suzang Nim pasted on his back to the teacher. After seeing the drawing, the teacher starts to laugh at him and she says that the picture is so funny. The students in the class look at each other and they cannot control their laugh as well so all of them start to laugh at Juwen. After seeing that everyone in the class including the teacher is laughing at him, Juwen gets speechless and he does not what he should do now. The teacher asks him who did this to him so he turns around and tells her that it is Yu Xiangbin who is behind all of this. He abuses him in front of the teacher and tells her that he is the one who keeps bullying him. The teacher asks him if he is telling the truth and then she asks him what he wants her to do about it. Everyone starts to laugh at him again and then the teacher tells him to sit down and then she tells him if he will disturb the lecture one more time then she is going to punish him. Before she says anything else Juwen says to her that he knew she would be like this and then he takes out something from his bag covered in a piece of cloth. He removes the cloth and points the gum that was covered in it at the teacher. Everyone is shocked and the teacher asks him what is he doing and he cross-questions them what they think he is doing. Jiwen then takes his revenge due to which everyone in the class panics and it gets completely quiet. Then one of the girls runs towards the door to open it and run to save her life but the door is locked and she cannot open it. Jiwen then points the gum at the guy who drew the drawing and then due to fear says that he did not draw the drawing purposely and then tells him that he didn't want to draw it but Yu Xiangbin made him draw the funny drawing. Juwen is so angry that he does not listen to him either and then he hits him too. Then he points the gum at another guy in the class who had nothing to do with all of the bullying scene but Juwen also takes his revenge from him. He keeps killing everyone in the class and at last, everyone is dead except Xiangbin. However, Juwen points his gum at him and then Xiangbin starts to cry and he begs for his life but Juwen beats him up and then closes his eyes. Then he opens his eyes and sees that he is laying on his bed in his room and looks at the side table and sees the drawing is still there so he says what would it be like if all of this wasn't a dream. It's cloudy out there and a school bus is headed somewhere. One of the students looks out of the window and excitedly tells everyone to look at the clouds and then he says that he thinks that this school retreat is going to be a bus. The teacher sitting at the first seat turns around and then she tells everyone to sit down and shouts at them to stop walking around as she does not want any accidents on this retreat. Meanwhile, Juwen is using his phone and the seat next to him is full of bags. Then he opens the messenger on the phone and starts to talk to a girl. The girl sent a message to him that she cannot believe that his class retreat didn't get cancelled even after the rain and he replies that he cannot believe it either and said that he didn't want to go either. Then the girl replies that he is going to share a room with one of those guys who bully him and then she says that she is not going to lie but he has spectacular bad luck. Jiwen looks behind and then sees the guys who bully him laughing and enjoying the trip with each other. 
Then he sees that the girl texts him that she is willing to bet that those guys are not going to share the room with him. And then she says that who knows maybe they will ask him to change the rooms. Then Jiwen says that if this happens it would be nice. And then they talk about the last episode of Maria from the Sky is going to be made into a movie. And then she sends him the teaser poster. While they are talking Xiangbin comes from behind and he calls Jiwen. Jiwen turns around and hides his phone as he gets scared and then Xiangbin says to him that it looks like they are room. And Jiwen says yeah it looks like it. Then he asks Juwen if he minds changing rooms with Sangwon and then Juwen turns around and looks at Sangwon. Then he asks Seongbin if he wants him to change the room seriously and then agrees with him that he will change his room. Then Juwen looks down so Seongbin asks him if he is relieved and Juwen thinks that he was too obvious. Then Seongbin asks Sangwon if he really had to be in the same room with him so they both look at each other and then Sangwon tells him that he is not in the same room with him. All of them finally reach the retreat ground and sees the welcome board displayed over there. Then all of the students get off the bus and the teacher tells them to keep their hands over their phones and then the female teacher standing there tells them to obey the order quickly and then she tells them not to forget to write their names on the sticker. One of the students takes phones from every student in the back and the students say that their school is the worst and then they ask who the hell confiscates the phones. Then the students gossip that homerooms three and four are coming next week, and they do not think that the weather will be better then, as it looks like it will rain for sure. Then the other student says that he wouldn't mind if it rains because they will get to stay inside all day. While everyone is talking about the schedule for today, Jiwen is talking to the girl on his messenger and then he tells her that they are going to take his phone, so he will talk to her later. She tells him to make it back in one piece and then the teacher tells everyone to be attentive as they are not here to fool around. The students keep murmuring and one of the students says that they are here to fool around and then the teacher tells them that they are going to be inspecting their bags. So, he shouts at them to empty their bags and lay out the contents neatly on the ground and yells at them to begin doing it. Sangwon then says if he's seriously going to look at that and abuses him then he says that he is checking their bags like he is in the military. After listening to this one of his friends laughs and says that he would bet his left nut that the teacher didn't even finish compulsory military service. While everyone is murmuring a girl is standing in the line and then another girl behind her warns her that it would be better for her if she does not get their booze confiscated or else she will make her life hell and then she says to her that she is not joking at all. Then the girl tells her not to worry as she hid their booze somewhere safe and the girl behind asks her if she is sure the booze is safe. Then the teacher tells them that they have a class that arrived last week and they will show the new arrivals what they can do. Then the teacher tells everyone to make a noise as loud as they can as the louder class gets to eat first. Then everyone's single student makes a noise on the ground and then the teacher tells them to do the 30 jumping jacks and then he tells them not to count the final number and tells them to try to get right this time. Everyone starts to do the jumping jacks again and Sanguine yells at everyone if anyone amongst them says 30 out loud he will kill them. All of them are exercising and counting and Juwen is super tired he says that he is super out of shape. Then he is going to say that he is done doing 30 jumping jacks but shuts his mouth in between as he remembers the teacher told them not to say it. Everyone gets angry at him and abuses him and then Juwen looks up and sees that everyone is staring at him. He gets scared and says sorry to everyone. At night the Juwen in the room is sitting and then he claps to kill the mosquito. One of the guys wakes up and he asks him if he is crazy because he told him to clap more quietly. Jiwen then apologizes to him and then Xiangbin calls him and asks him what he thinks will happen to him tomorrow if he finds a single mosquito bite on himself. Jiwen due to fear says that he will make sure that does not happen and starts to end the mosquitoes again. This time he claps louder again and the guy gets up and angrily says that he already told him to keep it down and Jiwen apologizes to him again. Meanwhile, at the girl's side, one of the girls is yelling at another to keep it together and the other girl asks her if she messed up again. The girl then says to her that she would have practiced more ahead of time if she had half a brain and then she says to her that she is going to ruin their performance. Another girl comes forward and tells Mira to calm down. The girl who is super angry name is Mira. Then she tells her that they didn't have much time to practice as she changed the song at the last minute. After listening to that Mira asks her angrily if she thinks it is her fault and the girl gets scared and says that she is not saying and she does not think that it is her fault at all. While they are yelling at each other a guard comes into the room and then he asks them what are they doing here this late Mira tells him that there is actually a talent show tomorrow and then she says that they need a bit more practice. Then Mira says that they have got permission from their teachers and asks him if it is okay if they practice out here for a bit and then she promises him that they will not be long. After listening to her that they got permission from the teachers the guard tells them that they can stay here for a bit but he tells them to try to keep it down and then tells them not to be out here too late. 
When the guard leaves Mira angrily says that she swears that these loser does not know when to keep their noses out of other people's business and starts to walk away. While walking away she says that this stress is upsetting her stomach and the girls who were practicing with her out here ask her where is she going. Mira tells them that she is going to use the toilet and then tells them to keep practicing. She goes into the toilet and while using it she says that they are going to look like idiots on the stage. Then she says that she does not want Seongbin laughing at her. While she is in there using the toilet and smoking the pot, the door opens slowly and someone out there says to her that they smell an electronic cigarette. Whoever is out there starts to walk towards the toilet and she hides the pot as she is scared and comes right in front of her toilet. Then, they ask if it is coming from here and Mira angrily says if it is Sujin and tells him to change his voice as she knows it is her. And then she tells her to cut it out as it is not funny at all. However, the one out there says that it loves that smell as it adds flavor. While Mira is inside the toilet, she looks up and sees two strings and gets super scared as whatever it is it is not human. Then the blood drops and her pod also drops on the floor. Outside the women's toilet, someone displayed the board that it is out of order and it is written to use the one on the third floor. In the archery range, a few people are practicing there including Sangwon and another guy who loves to bully students in the class. Sangwon misses one of the shots so, his friend tells him that a temper like that requires sense. Then Sangwon angrily asks him where the hell is Seongbin and his friend tells him that he is in the nurse's office for anemia. Sangwon asks him if he can believe that anemia. And then they both look towards the target board and sees that the arrow is right in the center. When they look aside who did that, they see a girl holding the archery in her hands and he says to his friend Shin Young Kang that this girl is too awesome. Then Shin Young Kang says to him why doesn't he tell her about that and then Sangwon says that he cannot do that. After listening to this Shin Young Kan says that he knows that Sangwon cannot express his feelings to her because who wants to be known as the guy that likes the outcast and Sangwon starts to hit the target board again. However, he cannot hit the target and says that this sucks and then he says that what the hell is he doing in the archery anyway. Then Sangwon asks Shin Young why Seongbin wants to come here as they can just duck out of these dumb retreats anyway. Then Shin Young says that Seongbin is a model student at least in everyone else's eyes anyway and then Sangwon throws the archery on the floor and says that he is so sick of this stupid act. After listening to this Shin Young asks Sangwon why doesn't he ever say that to Seongbin's face and Sangwon sighs and ignores him. Then an announcement is made to change into their uniforms and gather into the auditorium and then another announcement is made for the talent show participants to show up right in front of the administrative office. Everyone gets up to get ready quickly as the clock is ticking and they need to be there right on time Seongbin thinks that it looks like the retreat is already over. Then he gets up and asks everyone if they don't feel a bit disappointed as something feels missing and then he says that he means that they have to make this retreat memorable. Then one of the guys asks him if he is talking about the alcohol and then he says that they didn't bring any because he suggested them not to as he told them that things will be difficult if they get caught. Seongbin says that he did say that but there is still hope and tells them all that some other dipshits brought some for them. Meanwhile, in the lounge teachers are playing cards and one of them says to another that it looks like he gets to keep these and asks Director Lee, the other teacher sitting and playing with him, if he could help him count the points. Then Director Lee asks him if he is sure and then asks him if he never played this game before. Then he asks him again if he is sure he is not Korean or something and the other man tells him that it is really his first time playing this game and says to Director Lee that he thinks he is not good at this game. Then a teacher asks Ms. Kim if she is not going to the kids' talent show and he tells her that she doesn't see and why would she. Then she says that she is sure that the retreat staff will keep a good eye on them and Director Lee coughs and interferes to says that he thinks that they should go and then he says that the kids really worked hard to prepare. And that is why they should go to show them a little support. One of the guys in the room asks Seongbin if he knows where the teachers keep the confiscated items and he tells him that they keep them in the teacher lounge as he saw it when he stopped by to ask for permission to go to the nurse's office. Then he tells him that the old cue ball, their teacher, was taking sips of it in secret. Seongbin says that the locker is in the back of the lounge and they cannot miss it. The guy then says to him that they will get it but it is really risky. And then Seongbin says that it is almost time for the talent show so the girls are going to be dancing to K-pop and that old cue ball wouldn't miss it for the world. Then he says that he will also drag the other teachers with him so he doesn't look like a perv. And then he says that it is not like they are the ones going in there and asks Juwon if he is saying right or not. After listening to this Juwon gets scared and he turns around and then Seongbin tells him that he is going to go to get the booze for them. And then he says to him that if he gets caught then they do not have anything to do with it. Jiwon is worried and scared at the same time and he tells them while hesitating that he cannot go there and then Seongbin asks him what he just said. 
Ji Wen tells him again that he cannot do it as there is just no way and Xiangbin's friend angrily asks him if he wants a knee between his legs. Ji Wen has no choice left but to go in there and bring booze for them but he is too scared due to which he sits down on his knees and tells them that he cannot get into any trouble as his dad is really sick and he is in the hospital right now. Then he says that his dad is heartbroken enough as it is because he has to be home alone right now. Then he says that if his father finds out that his son is in trouble then he will not be able to handle the stress. Seongbin says that he knows that his father is sick and says that he of course knows about him living alone. Then he thanks Juwen because they had a place to hang out last time because of him and then he says to Juwen that he is completely blowing this out of proportion and asks him what is the worst that could happen as they are not going to expel him for stealing a few bottles of Saju. Then Seongbin tells him not to be dramatic and then he says that he is little hurt. Then he says to Juwen that he is afraid of his father's condition getting worse and asks him if he isn't afraid of him. Juwen looks up after listening to this and then Seongbin asks him if their friendship doesn't mean jack to him. The standing at the back says that it is really cold, and Seongbin asks Juwen to tell him again what is more important to him. Juwen is scared and speechless at the same time and he does not know what to say then he says to Seongbin to listen to him as he cannot go in there because he is in such a bad situation. Then Seongbin asks his friend Chan Hyuk to bring the mosquito repellent. Then he says to Juwen that if he doesn't answer then he will make him eat this repellent and asks him again what is more important to him their friendship or his dad. Then he breaks the repellent and says that he is waiting for his answer and Juwen says that his friendship with them is more important to him. Seongbin tells him to say it louder as he cannot hear it and Juwen says that his friendship with them is more important Seongbin hits him right on the face and asks Chan Hyuk if he heard that. Then he says that Juwen is such a terrible son. Meanwhile, Juwen spits blood out of his mouth and Seongbin asks his friend if he can believe this all as Juwen is so afraid of taking a little beating because he just threw the old man under the bus. Seongbin then says that if he was Juwen's parents then he would have been ashamed to call him his son and then he tells Chan Hyuk that they should leave to see the little talent show and they both walk out of the room. Then Juwen says to them that he feels even worse for their parents as they must be devastated to have shit like them for a son. The moment when Juwen finally stood up against Seongbin. He asks Juwen if he wants to say that again Juwen gets scared and then Seongbin says that he gets it that he decides this is the day he dies. Juwen is scared and he looks out of the window and then runs towards it to jump out of it. Then Chan Hyuk asks Seongbin what is Juwen thinking right now and Juwen jumps out of the window to save himself from them. However, he falls to the ground as the window was too high but he gets up again to run as he is terrified that they might come behind him to kill him and Seongbin yells at him from the window that he is going to beat him up and jumps out of the window. Juwen keeps running and as he does not know what else he should do to save himself from Seongbin. Juwen wants to save himself and he says that he has never seen Seongbin that pissed off ever before and if he catches him then he will get hit by him. He runs into the forest and the girls while walking towards the talent show gossip that they really didn't do too much practice last night and say what are they going to do so the other girl tells her that they are going to lose. Then one of them says that Mira totally screwed them over and this was all her idea and the girl at the back is quiet and she is thinking about Mira that she went into the toilet and the other girl told her to let's take it from the top. Meanwhile, Mira said that she quit and the girls asked her if she is serious as being in the talent show was all her idea and she tells her that she cannot just quit like this. However, Mira walked away without listening to them and all of them were worried that what is wrong with her and what has gotten inside her and the little girl standing there saw the blood on the back of her shirt. While walking towards the talent show they think that something is wrong with Mira and they asked the little girl hey as she is roomies with Mira and they ask her if she asked Mira last night why she suddenly quit. Hei Yong tells them that Mira didn't say anything last night and looks down again. Then she has a flashback that she is laying down between the girl and on her right Mira was sleeping. Then she looked at her and said that she cannot quit just because she was bad and said that this whole thing was her idea. Then she said to Mira that quitting like this isn't fair to the other two and she asks her how can she be so selfish. However, Hei Yong was imagining all of this and she couldn't actually say all of this to her but she was so scared. Hei Yong is scared, to be honest with her and she doesn't know if they are friends or not. At night when Hei Yong was in her bed thinking all this Mira started to say that her name is Mira Han and she attended the Yongchun Middle School. Then she says that she is the youngest child in her family and has two older brothers born in Busan. Then she says that she moved to Seoul in elementary school and she lives in building 509, apartment 307. She says that she wants to be a K-pop star and her favorite idol group is Seven Boys. She has a YouTube channel called Mira's Miracles. She has 13203 subscribers, an average of 1000 views per video, and is a heavy smoker and she switched recently to electronic cigarettes. 
Then she says that she does not take school seriously, and she likes another bully Seong Bin Yu. Then she tells her close friends list and then says that she has memorized it all. Hey Yong while walking with her friends stops and tells everything to her friends so they say that it is some creepy sleep talking then she asks Hey Yong if that means she didn't get to talk to her and the other girl says that Hey Yong has the courage of a small mouse. Then Hei Yong says that she doesn't think that it was some sleep talking and she says that something is not right and then she says that it wasn't all. The other girls ask her what she means and then she says that when she was laying down with her a white spirit came out of her body and she smelled a weird stench that she has never smelled before. While she was talking to them Mira is standing right behind them with yellow eyes. When they all see Mira standing right behind them, they all run away from her and then she says hi to Hei Then she smiles and asks her if there is something wrong. All of the girls stare at her and one of the girls asks Mira what the hell is she going to do as she walked out on them and now it is almost time for the show. Mira tells them not to worry about anything and then she tells them that today's show is going to be incredible and smiles again. In the talent show, everyone was enjoying and then the host says that their trust, their love, and their promises were everlasting and said that the dancers on the stage are so good except the one at the back and then he gets him off the stage. Meanwhile, one of the guards asks another what he means that some of them are missing and then the guard tells him that he counted the students and two students are missing from class 1 and then he asks what should they do. Then the other guy tells him to forget them and says not to ruin the fun and gives a big smile. While in the forest, Ju Wen is tired of running and he finally stops but when he looks behind, he says that he is lost as he came too far and says that what should he do now. When he looks around, he sees complete darkness and trees everywhere and then he hugs himself and tells himself to get a hold as he can figure this out. Then he starts to take small steps and sees a water pond near him but he is too standing too high and it is difficult to get down there. He looks in the water and says that it is light and grabs a stem to slide down but when he goes down there the light disappears and his foot slips due to which he falls from a height. However, he is worried that whatever is happening is the end and he says that it cannot be his end then he says that if he knew this is going to happen then and would have kept his mouth shut and fallen directly down on the ground. Meanwhile, Seongbin is looking around for him to beat him up and he keeps shouting where the hell did he go and sees that it starts to rain. Then he decides that he should head back and it starts to rain heavily. In the talent show, a guy is standing on the stage blowing a flute and everyone tells him to get off the stage and then throw bottles and rubbish at him. Then the guy on the stage gets angry and asks them what they know about the recorder and the crowd Seongbin's friends ask each other where is he, but none of them know about him. Then Sangwon's friend says that it is all Juwon's fault. Then the host comes on the stage and he says to everyone that it looks like the recorder's performance got the crowd riled up, and then he says that they have one more act left. Then he calls Mira, Heyong, Jinhui, and Sujin from class 2 onto the stage to show their talent to them. He then says that these are the Miracle Girls and they will be performing an exciting dance cover and tells everyone to give a big round of applause for them. Everyone in the crowd starts to cheer up Mir by calling her name again and again and then the light cuts off. Everyone starts to ask what is happening as they are clueless and then one of them says that they really pulled out all the stops for the main event. The blue Q teacher is worried and asks everyone if this is supposed to happen and the one standing next to him tells him that he is not sure everyone asks if this is a blooper reel. And one of them tells them that it is a live performance so they cannot have blooper reels. Then a flashlight turns on and Mira is standing right under it with some blood on her face. Then the teacher asks if this is part of their act and then Mira says help to everyone. She smiles weirdly and says that she hopes that all of them have enjoyed their retreat. However, everyone is still clueless about whatever is happening and then Mira says that now it is time for all of them to feast on their brains. On the other side, Ju Wen is laying somewhere on the ground as he fell and is badly injured and it is raining too. It keeps raining and then Ju Wen eyes open up and he starts to cough. Then he manages to get up and starts to crawl while inhaling and exhaling super fast. Then he keeps his hand on his heart and says that he is alive and starts to laugh. He keeps laughing and says that he is alive and that he made it as he tumbled down the cliff and somehow, he still survived. He keeps laughing and then looks to his left and sees a gun on the ground right next to him. He stares at the gun and when he looks up, he sees a truck toppled over there too. Then Ju Hwan gets up and sees that it is a beaver mover's truck so he thinks that what is a mover's truck doing here out in the middle of nowhere. It is raining heavily and he tried to look inside the truck and then picks up the gun that was on the ground and then he debates if the gun is real or not. Then he starts to walk and goes behind the truck to see what is in there. When he goes behind the truck, he sees that the truck is damaged from behind and when he goes near it to open it up and look at what is inside it, he sees someone standing right behind him in the forest. When he looks closely, he sees that it is Seongbin and closes his eyes due to fear. 
Then he opens again and sees that there is no one standing in the forest and then he picks up his gun and says to Snongbin to come out of the forest as he knows he is out there. Then Ju Wen tells him that he has a gun and asks him if he can hear it. Then Xiangbin comes from behind and says how strange and then Ju Wen turns around and sees him standing there. Then Xiangbin asks Ju Wen why would there be a moving truck out there and rolled onto its side. Then he says that no one would expect to find a gun in a moving truck. Ju Wen looks at him and then Xiangbin asks him to hand over the gun and Ju Wen tells him to stay back or else he will beat him up. Xiangbin keeps walking near him and asks him if he really thinks that a wet gun is going to fire. And then he asks Ju Wen if he even knows how to fire a gun and then tries to take the gun from him. While taking the gun Xiangbin tells Ju Wen to hand over the gun to him and Ju Wen tells him to let go but Xiangbin says that a weapon like this has no business in the hands of a loser like Ju Wen. After listening to this Ju Wen gets angry and takes the gun out of Xiangbin's hands and then loads it. Then he says that this gun belongs to him and abuses him. Then he takes his revenge right on due to which Xiangbin falls to the ground and Ju Wen goes near him and says that this gun is his and asks him if he heard him. He keeps saying that it is his gun and then sees that there is no one on the ground. Then he looks at the gun and remembers how he beat those monsters up. Then he comes from behind and says to the one using this gun that he set a new high score and the one who was using this gun says that he got lucky and then asks the little guy if he wants to try. The little guy tells him that he has never played a shooting game before and the guy with the gun in his hands told him that there is a first time for everything and hands over the gun to him. Then the little guy kept killing the monster and made a new high score and then the guy who gave him the gun asked him if he is sure he never used the gun ever before and says that he is a little mad right now and tells the little guy that he should have seen his face as it looked like he was seriously in the zombie apocalypse. And the little guy tells him that he imagined that he was in there and then fires at the monsters again. Then Ju Wen tries to get inside the truck and he sees a pack full of 30 bullets. He says that there are 29 people in his class and if he counts Ms. Kim that makes it 30. When Mira says to everyone on the stage that it is now time for them to feast their brains everyone starts to murmur and they think that she is just doing some act on the stage. Then the host approaches her on the stage and he says to her that she should have told them if she was going to switch up her act then Mira says to him that she is not interested in eating his brain and then grabs his face and says to him that doesn't mean that she is going to let him live and beats him up right in front of everyone. However, everyone still thinks that she is just acting on the stage and they say that her act looks so real and one of them says that he doesn't know whether he should be thrilled or scared. They find Mira hot while she is on the stage and then Mira jumps off the stage. She says that first things first and from every single part of her body warm kind of things come out due to which everyone gets scared and she says that she needs to take out the trash. She stands up and hits many of the students who are near her. Then one of the girls tells everyone who is left behind to run for their lives but no one listens so she yells at them to run. Everyone runs for their lives and one of the students falls on the floor so everyone steps on him as they do not care about anyone else except themselves. Everyone runs to save their lives and they are pushing and abusing the ones who are coming in their way while they are running away. Then the blue Q teacher director Lee asks everyone what the hell is going on and when the students reach the gate, the guards tell them that no one can leave. The students ask him who are they and the guard takes out his tongue and says that they are monsters. Director Lee pushes the pee teacher to move forward and do something and the PE teacher holds a chair in his hand and director Lee tells him to save the children. Then the PE teacher hits the monster guard standing right in front of them blocking their way with the chair and the monster says to him that their bodies are made with protein too same as human bodies. Then the monster says that even though their bodies are the same as humans but they do not have the same energy level and then explodes the head of the PE teacher in front of the children standing right behind him. Then he runs towards the children to hit them and one of the students says to Sangwon to do something. Sangwon asks him what the hell he wants him to do right now and asks him if he didn't just see what happened with the PE teacher head. Then Sangwon says to him to understand that they are not humans. Meanwhile, the children left behind are scared and then Mira starts to walk towards them to hit them all too. All of the students get close to each other and then one of the guards says to everyone to listen up and says to everyone to calm down. Then he says to the children that he is going to describe some people and all of them have to do is raise their hands if they think that's them and then he tells them to be honest. Then he starts to play the game with the students and he asks if anyone here is rich and sees no one has raised their hands so he asks again and then one of the students tells him that he is rich. After finding it out that he is rich the guard asks him if he is truly rich. Then the student tells him that his grandfather owns one of the largest construction companies in the country. And then he says that his father is a national assemblyman. The guard comes near him and says that he has got it all including money and power and tells him not to say that. 
Then the student asks him why should he say it so he stabs something in his head that is connected to his head. Then the monster picks up the glasses and says that it is a silly question and says that he wants to be rich and wears his glasses. Everyone in the class gets super terrified and one of the students begs the monster not to hit him as he is poor and says that he has zero talents. Then he tells him that he gets the worst grades and he is dumb as a rock. The monster guard looks at him and says to him that he looks like it and then a warm kind of thing comes out of his eye and he hits that guy too. Then another guard asks among the students if there is any visitor from abroad and then looks at the teacher and asks him if he is an English teacher as he looks fit. The English teacher tells him to wait, and then he asks him what is he and then a little girl in the crowd walks towards him. Then she tells everyone to face them as none of them are getting out of there alive. Then she says that she accepts her fate and asks the monster to at least tell them what the hell is he. While she is talking to them, she brings out something from her pocket and it is a sharp knife. Then the girl says to him that he is not a brainless beast and it is obvious and then she says to him to show them a shred of dignity and tells them. The monster guard starts to walk towards her and removes his cap and then changes into another human. The monster then asks her what difference will it make and grabs her shoulder and says that he has gotten closer to her as much as she wanted. The girl is scared and the monster tells her to do it and take that little blade out that she is hiding and see if she can hit him. The girl is super terrified and she cannot do anything so the monster asks her if she thought that she could be a hero and then grabs her neck. While grabbing the neck the monster says that it is only right if he snaps her neck and puts her in her place. However, he doesn't hit her and Mira calls Shinyon Kan and says to her that Mira hated her then the monster guard asks her if Mira is the name of the girl whose image he has taken and the monster inside Mira's body tells them that yes it took her body and Mira was painfully jealous of this girl. Then the monster tells her that Mira is still full of hate. And the monster guard throws Shinyong Kan towards her and tells her to take care of her then. Then the monster inside Mira's body says to her that she has no idea how much Mira hates her. In the crowd director Lee tells another teacher, Jaden, to do something but he doesn't know what to do so he asks him that what should he really do. Meanwhile, Mira and Shinyong Kan are right in front of each other and someone breaks into the club while shouting Shinyong Kan's name. When they look around it is Jiwen who is covered in dirt and has a gun on his back. When Jiwen looks up he sees monsters and his classmates right in front of him so he doesn't know what is going on. Then the monster guard asks who is and the monster inside Mira's body tells him that it has no clue as he is not in Mira's memory. And then the monster guard says to hit him. The other monster says that he will do the task and starts to walk toward Jiwen to hit him. When he gets near him, he takes out his tongue again and Jiwen doesn't know what to do but Shinyong shouts his name and she tells him to run to save his life. The monster gets too close to him and then he says to Juwen that he looks weak and stupid to them and from every part of his body a warm kind of thing comes out. Then the monster says to him that he is nothing but trash and says that trash gets disposed of. Juwen takes out his gun and loads it and then points at the monster standing right in front of him. Then he fires at the monster with all his anger. When Juwen fires at the monster standing right in front of him a few cells enter the monster's body and it reacts with the cells that are already present in there due to which one of his shoulders including the arm blows off. Everyone looks at it and then the monster who got hit asks Juwen where did he get that from and how is this possible. However, the monster couldn't stay alive for too long so it fells on the ground and dies. Every single student in there and the monster is shocked and they keep staring at him and then Shinyong asks if it is the shock. One of the monsters says that it remembers that thing and it is that gun and it is sure of it. The monster inside Mira's body tells every other monster to get a hold of their selves as it is just one gun. When she is talking to another monster Shinyong tries to attack her but the monster saves itself and abuses her. Then the monster tries to hit Shinyong but she saved herself from its attack and then she tells everyone to run and save their lives as the monster has no intentions of letting any of them lie. Then Shinyong tells everyone to scatter in every direction as they have an advantage that they outnumber them and everyone starts to scatter. Some of the guys run out of the back door and some run out of the window and they tell each other to get outside and run if they want to live. One of the monster guards tells another that there is nothing to worry about as Juwen is just a kid with no shooting experience and the monster says that they should hit him right now and then take that shotgun. The monster hits many students again who are still in there and then Juwen loads his gun again to beat them all. He fires at many monsters and each of them dies one by one. Meanwhile, Ms. Kim is on the phone and she says that she heard some gunshots and then she says that it cannot happen and she must have misheard and then someone on the phone asks her if they can have a little date as soon as she gets back when the retreat ends. Ms. Kim tells him that she thinks that they will be pretty exhausted and then she tries to talk about Hyunjiong but the call hangs up. Ms. Kim keeps trying to ask what was she going to talk about and then she sees that the call ended. 
Then she tries to call her boyfriend back but the call ends again and her phone falls on the floor. She looks down and says what was that. Meanwhile, Jiwen shoots one of the monsters that was going to hit him and his shoulder blows off but Jiwen isn't sure if he got him or if it is enough to take his revenge from him. When Jiwen realizes that there is more than one monster so the monster says that there are four left and says thanks him for that. Then the child on the floor covers his head and he starts to shout that he doesn't want to die and says that lets this all be a dream but the monster grabs him by the neck and picks him up right in front of Jiwen. Jiwen loads his gun again to hit at the monster, but the little guy tells him to wait. However, Jiwen still aims at the monster and then the monster throws the little guy at him but Jaden comes in between and saves the little guy. Then Jaden tells Jiwen to hit those monsters and tells him to hurry up. Jiwen then points the gun at the monster that is in the air and then hits him but the monster comes down angrily. On the other side, the head monsters are leaving and one of them says to the monster inside Mira's body that it thinks that it is their cue to exit and the monster inside Mira's body agrees with it. Then the monster head tells monster number 4 to stand down and then he tells it to let go as it doesn't want to lose it too. All of the monsters disappear leaving a smoke behind due to which everyone starts to cough. Then all of them look around and then Shinyoung asks where did those things go and something starts to drip on her head. Then she looks up and sees a hole in the roof and then she asks if those things ran away. After realizing that the monster ran away everyone starts to look at Juwin with shock. Meanwhile, Seongbin finally finds his way back and says that he is going to hit Juwin for real this time as he got him lost in the woods and Seongbin finds it embarrassing for himself. Then he says that it is always hurt that it is dangerous in the woods at night and he almost got himself stranded. He looks at the auditorium and realizes that the talent show is already over and says that it is too early to be over. Seongbin questions himself why is it so quiet while somebody is standing right behind him. In the auditorium, Shinyoung is looking at the roof and then director Lee starts to walk towards Juwen. Then he asks him where did he get that gun from and Juwen tells him that he found it. Director Lee asks him that he found it from where but Juwen doesn't reply to him this time. Then Director Lee says to him that he came to think of this where was he all this time. And then Shinyoung Kan says to him from behind that she thinks that it is not important right now. Then Jaden also tells him that it is not important and Shinyoung is right as many students died as those creatures attacked them so he tells him that the most urgent thing is to call the police and he starts to dial 911 to call the police. However, he hears a loud noise from the phone speaker so Director Lee asks him what is wrong he tells him that he cannot get through and then Director Lee asks him again what he means and how can that be possible. Then one of the guys enters the auditorium and tells them that it looks like there is no reception and then one of the students asks what should they do now as they have to get out of there before they end up being hit like others. The girl standing behind him looks at the student and the blood on the floor so she cannot control herself and then starts to vomit. The guy asks her if she is okay and she reverses and questions him what were those things and the guy says that he knows the same as she does. Then he pinches himself and says that it hurts when he does it so it is not a nightmare. And then he says that none of this feels real at all. Another girl looks at the monster and says what in the world it is it doesn't seem like it is human and Shinyoung says to her that last time she checked humans don't grow tentacles from their body. And then she looks towards Jiwen. She stares at his foot and then she removes the shoes of the guy that has been hit by the monster. The girl standing next to her asks her what is she doing so she replies that she is trying to stay alive. Then she removes his shoes and walks towards Jiwen and hands him over the shoes and then Jiwen says thanks to her. Then she tells everyone that they cannot stay here as it is too dangerous to be out here and says to Juwen that she doesn't know what that gun is but it can hit those creatures. Juwen looks at the gun and then says that he thinks the same and then Shinyoung tells him to put the shoes on as they have to go to the teacher's lounge and she tells him to take the lead. Then director Lee says to Juwen to wait as a student like him shouldn't be holding something so dangerous and says to Juwen that he will take the gun for now. Juwen goes away with the gun as he doesn't want to give the gun to the teacher so then director Lee asks him what he thinks he is doing. Juwen gets super possessive about the gun and he tells the director that he will not hand over the gun as it belongs to him. The director asks him angrily what he just said and then he lectures him that he is not even old enough to go to the military and then he asks him if he has even been fired one of those things before. Juwen looks at him and says that he just fired and then he says that he is not giving this gun to anyone and says that if anyone tries to take it from him then he will beat them up and he means it. Director Lee gets angry and abuses him and then asks him if he thinks his little threats scare him. Jiwen tells him that he doesn't think that it is an empty threat and then the little student comes from behind and he asks Juwen if he was going to hit him when the monster was grabbing him by the neck. Then all of them run out of the auditorium and on the other side, 
Seongbin is still angry at Ju, and he says that he is going to hit him this time as he is the one due to which Seongbin went to the jungle this hour and almost got strangled. Then Seongbin stands there for a while and realizes that everyone went home sooner than he knows and he turns around to see who is standing behind him. He sees a girl soaked in water, and then Seongbin asks if it is Heyong and she tells him that there are monsters. Seongbin doesn't understand what is she saying, and he tells her that she is supposed to be with Mira and asks her what is she doing out there. Heyong tells him that there are monsters and they have to get away, and then she hugs Seongbin. Seongbin smells blood from her so he thinks that all of the stuff on her shirt is really blood and Heyong tells him that they are dead of them. Seongbin asks her what is she talking about so she tells him that there were monsters that looked like Mira, and they beat everyone. However, he still doesn't understand anything, and he says what is she saying. One hour later, one guy asks another what are they going to do as they are totally screwed and the other one says that he knows that they just saw monsters and cannot believe it. The other one says that he is having trouble believing it too but they are also hopelessly lost and then he says that they are screwed as being in the woods late at night is too dangerous. And the other guy says to him that he told him to hide in one of the buildings but the other one says that they could have gotten cornered indoors so they are better out here. Then the other one agrees with him too and says that he is tight as he cannot wait to be found as a cold corpse tomorrow morning. Then they say that it is freaking cold out here and they say to at last get a fire going on as it is raining and is too cold to be out there in the woods. Then the other one tells him that there is no way they can do that and they do not have fuel either. Then the other one tells him to just light it. And the one lighting the fire asks him if anyone told him he has a bad temper. While he is trying to light the fire, he says that it is wet and the other one says to him that he is worthless. Then one of them asks what he thinks that was all about and the other one says that how the hell will he know and the one who asked the question tells him that he is talking about the loser Jiwen. Then they talk about the gun that where they think that he got something like that from and the other one says that he ran into the woods and says that he never would have imagined that he would suddenly show up with a shotgun though. And then he says that he nearly had a heart attack. Then they say that he hit those creatures so easily and those creatures hit after it and then they say that if Snongbin was there he would have beaten up to death for sure. Then the other one asks if he noticed how good Juhun was with the gun and says that maybe all he does is play games. Then the other one asks him if he is serious and says that how can he joke at a time like this and says that they do not think they are going to get fire from this thing. While they are trying to light up the fire someone turns on a torch at them and when they see it Seongbin standing there. The two guys in the woods are Sangwon and his friend. Sangwon asks if it is Seongbin and then Seongbin asks him what he just said about Juwon. He asks them what Juwon did. One hour ago, everyone including the teacher gather in a room and Ms. Kim asks them did the monster seriously killed the students the Pete? teacher she asks them if they all have been drinking as she cannot believe them. Then she says that it is not funny and Jaden tells her that it is true and then MS. Kim asks them if it is true so they called the police or not. Then director Lee tells her that they tried but they couldn't contact the police. Then every one of them takes out all of the phones of the students and director Lee tells them to see if any phone has a single signal but they got no internet or signal at all. Meanwhile, Juwin checks his phone and thinks that he will not be able to get back home in one piece to meet his crew. Then a teacher asks the receptionist if the reception was always so bad out there and she tells him that this is the first time this is happening and the phones worked fine before. While they are talking Shinyo thinks that it is not just the receptionist's issue and thinks that what the loud noise from the phone means. Then one of the teachers says to Director Lee that those creatures are probably still close by and then he asks him if they shouldn't do something. And then Jaden says that he is right and asks Director Lee if he wasn't in the Marines before. Director Lee says to him rudely that he was in the Marines. But that was ages ago, and then he thinks about something for a bit. After thinking he says that the bus will be here tomorrow to pick them up so they can wait it out in this room until then. After listening to this Shin Young tells him that they will not make it if they stay in here and then she explains it to everyone as they do not understand what is she talking about. She tells them to remember that those things went out of the ceiling and they tore through it like the ceiling was paper. And then director Lee says that they will reinforce the ceiling and walls then. Shin Young tells him that no amount of reinforcement will stop them as they will get in no matter what they do. Then Director Lee asks her what is she suggesting to do if they go outside so Shin Young tells them that it is rain and it is night so going outside isn't the answer either. Then Director Lee angrily asks her what should they do then and Shin Young says that if any one of the teachers brought their car over here and Jayden says that one did. Then he tells her that they couldn't take the bus with them because they had some personal matters to take care of and Shin Young asks who was it and then he tells her that it was the PE teacher who brought the car here. Everyone starts to have a flashback of the PE teacher and how he was killed and all of them get quiet for a bit. While it is raining outside, 
Siangbin along with his friends is sitting somewhere and he says to them to let him get this straight. Mira turned into a monster and then killed Sujin and Jinhui by stabbing them with their tentacles. Heyong says yes and then she says when she realized what was happening, she ran to save her life and she barely managed to escape. Siangbin asks her if she thinks all of this is funny and then he yells at everyone and says that if everyone is out here to piss him off today and asks them if they even hear themselves. Heyong tells him to stop yelling or the creatures will find them and then he gets up and says that if he has to believe then the dead bodies of his friends will be lying right in front of the main building. Heyong tells him not to get there but he is too stubborn. He sees why shouldn't he go there as he has never seen a dead body ever before and he drags Heyong with him and tells her that they should go there to see the dead bodies. Siangbin wants to go there and see the dead body, but Heyong is too scared and she keeps telling him that she doesn't want to go there as the creatures will be there soon. Siangbin says that he knew that Heyong was a coward, but who knew that she was such a convincing actor and then he thinks if she smears herself in pig's blood. Siangbin keeps dragging her. And they finally reach the main building then they heard a sound so he asks if that sound came from the gymnasium. Then he tells Heyong to wait here and he will be back as he is going to take a look and then he walks inside the main building. When he goes in there, he sees everything is clean like a glass and then he sees that the main door is open so he starts to walk towards it. Then he grabs the door lock and opens the door to see inside. Meanwhile, Shinyong tries to convince Juwen and she says to him that he is the only one who can do this she tells him that they will have to go back to the gym to find the pee teacher's body. On the other side, Siangbin sees the dead bodies inside the auditorium and he cannot believe whatever he is seeing. While Xinyong tells Juwen that they have to find the body so that they can get the car keys. When Siangbin sees dead bodies and monsters left over there so he understands everything that Heyong was telling him about. He says that Heyong was serious and when he turns around, he sees her there screaming. Then Siangbin looks at the little guy in there who is begging for help saying that he doesn't want to die. Siangbin goes near him and asks him what the hell happened here and the guy tells him that it was all a bad dream he asks if it will be over if he goes to sleep and Siangbin yells at him to get a hold of himself and tells him not to close his eyes. The little guy keeps asking for help and he keeps calling his mom and dad and then his eyes closes and he dies. The light is off so Siangbin breaks a mirror and takes out a torch and then he says that it is better than nothing. Then he looks at the guys from the dance club and he cannot understand what the hell happened here and then he takes the shoes from one of the guys in there who is dead. Then he asks Heyong what is with looks as he took the shoes and then he says that these shoes are more useful now but Heyong tries to say something and he cuts her off in between and says that she is right that it is dangerous in here. He turns on the torch and says that they are leaving this place. On the other side, Jiwen loads his gun with the remaining bullets and Director Lee asks if he thinks those things know that they are in here and then he says that the light is off and the curtains are closed but they cannot let their guards down. Then he says that if they are lucky enough then the monsters are still chasing after the kids that ran away and they might not realize that they are here. The girl standing there asks him what is he saying and then he says that he didn't mean it he was just saying it. Then Shinyong tells Jaden that they should go now and then Jaden says if they even get the keys then he asks her if she knows how to drive. Then he says to her that it is a pretty big van and it is too dangerous for them to go out there by themselves and then he says that as their teacher he cannot let them go. After listening to this Shinyong asks him why doesn't he come along with them as they are sitting ducks here. Then she says that they cannot just sit around hoping that they will not find them so they have to do something to save their lives. Then MS, Kim says to her that how dare she speak to her teacher like that and Jaden tells her that it is okay. Then he thinks for a second and then tells them to count him in as he cannot let them two go alone so he will come with them. Then he says to them that they will give themselves away if there are too many of them. After deciding that Jaden is also coming with them, Shinyong tells everyone else that it will be just them who will go out there and she tells everyone else to wait in here for them and then she says that they will be back before they know it. Shinyong tells them to run out of the front entrance whenever they listen the sound of an engine. Then Ms. Kim says that she still hasn't seen those creatures and how they look like she doesn't have any idea about them. One of them tells her that they look like normal humans at first, but they also have tentacles that come out of the slits in their skins. Then Ms. Kim takes out her permanent marker, and she starts to draw on the back of Jaden and he keeps telling her that it will not go away. Then she says that it has to be somewhere hidden and draws a cross on his shoulder. Then Director Lee tells them that those monsters can shapeshift into other people then these marks will help them to recognize who is real. Then Shinyong says to them that to be more accurate it looks like the monsters suck up people's brains to take on their forms and then she tells them that they even take their memories and emotions. Then she says to them if anyone among them gets their brains sucked up by the creatures then they will also know about these marks so there is no use of these marks, to be honest. 
Then she says that there might already be a creature amongst them and everyone starts to look at each other. Then three of them leave to find the P.S. dead body and Jaden asks Shinyoung why she had to freak everyone out like that she apologizes to him and Juwon says what does he expect as Shinyoung isn't a team player. Shinyoung looks at him and she says to him that she is surprised because he has been so cooperative and then she says that she expected him to tell her to screw off. Then Jiwen says to her that she is not wrong and asks her why in the world would he ever help any of them as none of them ever gave a damn about him and then he says to her that she is also amongst them. Then he says to her that he would go as far as calling her a traitor. And then he says that he knows how she drives as the first time his dad passed out, he drove himself to the hospital and he was only in the middle school. Then he points his gun at her and asks her if she really thinks he would give a damn whether they live or not. Jiwen says to her that he is getting out of there alone. When Jiwen points his shotgun at Shinyoung he says to her that she really thinks that he is going to give a damn whether they live or not, and then he tells them that he is getting out of there alone. However, Shinyoung was never there and she comes from behind and asks him if he can check the hall and he agrees to check it. Then he starts to walk toward the hall while thinking that no one batted an eye and not even one person tried to help him when he was being picked on. Then he thinks that why won't anyone do anything? Everyone in the class was thinking that they are glad it wasn't them and the girls were thinking that he deserved it. Some of them felt bad for him, but didn't help him at all and they all let this happen to him. Sangwon was dragging him out of the class and he kept calling Shinyoung to help him as they used to be friends once. He kept telling her that it is him her childhood friend Juwen, but she kept staring at him but didn't come to help him. While he was thinking this, Jaden calls him and then he tells him that he was spacing out right now but he tells him that he is completely fine. Then they walk out of the building and Shinyoung says that it stopped raining but Jaden tells them to stay close by and then tells them that they have to go in this way quickly. They all start to walk and then Shinyoung asks Juwen where he got the gun and he tells her that he found it. She asks him where he found it and he tells her that he found it in the woods where there was no one. He told her that there was also a truck in the middle of the woods. So she asks him again that if there was a truck in the woods and he tells her that yes there was a truck in the middle of nowhere. Then Jaden comes near him and he asks what happened after it, and he tells him that he hit Snongbin in the middle of the woods but he disappeared even after dying. Then he says that when he took his revenge him all the bullets were on the trunk of the tree, and no one was harmed but when he touched the tree something green came onto his hand and then he turned around to think of what is inside the truck. Then he picks up the bullets that were in the truck and he also gets a bag there so he packs everything and then starts to walk towards the retreat ground. He looks behind and couldn't control himself so he goes near the truck to see what is inside there and when he opens the truck, he sees something weird in there. Shinyoung then asks him what was inside the truck and he tries to tell her something but he couldn't. On the other side, Seongbin says to Heyong if they keep moving that way then there should be a bridge and once they cross the bridge then there is a major road and Heyong asks him if he is sure about it. Then he tells her that he saw it during the bus ride, the day they came here. Heyong says to him that he has a great memory. But he sees two people running towards them for help but the monster stabs them both right in front of them. Both of them die and the monster inside Mira's body comes out to see if anyone else is there. Shinyong along with Heyong hides behind a tree and the monster comes near them to look out if there is anyone else there. Jiwen goes near the truck and then looks inside there. He sees something shocking. Then he returns back to the retreat ground and Shinyoung asks him what was inside so he has a flashback that there was something weird in there and then he tries to tell Shinyoung about it but Jaden calls him in between to cover him so he goes out with him. When Jiwen goes forward to cover Jaden, Shinyoung thinks if he is telling her the truth or not because he told her that he saw a truck in the middle of the woods and she doesn't believe it because it sounds so far-fetched. Then she thinks why would be shotgun be lying on the ground near a truck? Shinyoung keeps thinking about everything. And then she thinks that when Juwen shot the monster in the arm there was an explosion that came a moment later. That is why she thinks that something seems off about that shotgun. And they all finally reach in the auditorium to find Pete's body in there and then Juwen kicks on the door to open it while pointing his gun straight. Then he says to Shinyoung that he doesn't think that those monsters are here right now so Shinyoung says to him that she will go to look around for the P.E.'s body. And then she finally finds his body and sits there. She cannot digest what happened to him and she says sorry to her teacher because she couldn't save him from the attack. Then Jaden asks her if she found the keys or not but she doesn't reply to him and then she starts to look for the keys. She looked everywhere and in the last pocket, she prays to be here and then finally she finds them in his last pocket. Then she gets up and shows everyone that she finally found the keys. On the other side, Seongbin is hiding from the monsters as they are looking out for him so that they can feast on them. Seongbin and Heyong hide behind a wall. And she covers her mouth so that she doesn't make any noise. While the monster is right next to them, 
It says how annoying and walks away saying that she told them they should get the kid's phone first but the other monster never listens to it. Then the monster debates where did they put the phones in the teacher's lounge. Then the monster sighs and says that they will be fine if they look out for the guy with the shotgun. Then Seongbin says to Hyeyong that Mira has tentacles coming out of her body and Hyeyong tells him that she told him that it is not Mira. Then Hyeyong tells her that they should leave now and then both of them starts to walk away. While walking they see many dead bodies in the woods and then Seongbin starts to go near a dead body so Hyeyong asks him where he thinks he is going and then she tells him that they should leave and both of them start to walk again. Then Hyeyong tells him that she is so scared and then he comforts her saying that there is no need to worry once they get to the bend in the road. They will see a bridge and when he sees the bridge, it is broken. On the other side, Ji Win along with his companions runs towards the car and then Shin Young asks Jaden which car it is so he tells her that it is the white van in the far corner. She opens the car from far away and runs towards it and then she opens the rear door and tells Ju Win to get in there. Jaden sits at the front and then he asks if everyone is already inside and then he starts the car to drive. When he turns on the lights, he sees that the monster inside Mira is standing right in front of them. So all of them get scared and then Mira says to them that it is time for the finale of their retreat and then it says to find out who gets a little scared. She smiles and then opens her mouth in a round shape from which one of her tentacles comes out and then she attacks them inside the car due to which her tentacle goes in from the front and comes out from the back mirror. When Mira attacks the car, all of them inside it bend down and tackle her attack. Then Jaden hits it with the car due to which it falls on the ground. Then the monster inside Mira's body says which kind of teacher drives into a student with a minivan and then it gets up again. Ji Wen then tells Shin Yong to open the door but she asks him again what he just said to make sure she is listening to it right and he tells her again to just open the door. The monster gets up and calls Jaden's name out loud and then runs toward the car saying it is going to report him to the superintendent. Ji Wen steps out of the door and points the gun at the monster and then he fires at it. The monster falls there and then Jaden starts to drive away. The monster inside Mira's body doesn't remember Juwen from anywhere and it angrily says who the hell does he think he is and then one of its legs separates from the body. Shin Young asks Juwen if he is sure he hit the monster and he tells her that he thinks so he hit her. Jaden looks behind from the rearview mirror. He sees that Mira is still coming after them. The monster then jumps right over the roof of the car with all of its tentacles in the air and then Jaden applies a hard brake as a result of which the monster falls right in front of the car but it breaks one wheel of the car with its tentacles. That is why the car rolls over. Teachers and students who are still inside the room look out of the window, and then one of them tells Director Lee that something weird is happening out there. Director Lee asks him what is happening so he tells him that the van is here but he thinks that they are dead. They look out of the window and one of the students shouts due to fear that it is one of the monster and then he says that the monster followed Juwen and his companion till here. The other student who is looking out of the window tells him to stop yelling and then the monster turns around and finally found them. Then the monster says how convenient it is as it was already headed to the teacher's lounge and then it goes into the bushes to get near the window. Then the monster keeps its hand on the window and asks them if they tried to call anyone but no one replies so it gets angry and makes a crack in the window. Then it says to them that it asked a question from them and repeats the question. Meanwhile, the other monsters are hiding somewhere and one of them has lost its hand so they ask it if it is okay. It tells them that it will be fine soon as the arm will heal in an hour. Then another monster says that it is worried about the five. The monster inside Mira's body as it went out to get the phones but isn't back yet. Then a monster tells four to call five and it calls it. It keeps calling it. And then the other monster asks it what is wrong so it tells them that its phone has no signal at all and he cannot call five right now. When the monster couldn't make any contact with the five, they hear something and starts to look out of the window to see what it is. Then one of them asks number one if he heard it or sense it and he says that there is something out there. One of them says that it is probably just a wild animal but their head says that no, it definitely wasn't an animal. On the other side, Jiwen, Jaden, and Shin Yong are heard inside the car. Then Jiwen has a flashback in his dream that the weekend is already over and a little guy is walking with someone he asks him if he isn't afraid that he has to go back to school tomorrow and the little guy asks him what does he mean so the big guy tells him that he is bullied at the school and then he asks him if he is right. The little guy is Jiwen and he asks him if it is obvious so the guy in the glasses tells him that it is very obvious. The guy who is walking with him is crew and he asks him why didn't he tell him about it. Jiwen says to him that what good would happen even if he told him everything because he can't help him. Then Jiwen asks him if he knows how to fight and he asks him if he looks like he does and then gets quiet. 
Then Kru says to him that brute force isn't everything Juwen knows, as this isn't the Dark Age, and then he says to Juwen why he doesn't try to report it to the police. After that Kru says that people like to laugh at authority, but sometimes they do get the job done and Juwen says that his father is very sick, and then he says that he doesn't want his father to know that his son is being bullied. Kru then says to him to talk about complicated, and then Juwen asks Kru if he can hang out at his place tonight Kru tells him that he can hang out with him but Yoon is home right now. Then Jiwen asks Kru if Yoon hates him badly and thinks about her that she also bullies him and calls him a smelly loser. While they are talking someone approaches them and asks Jiwen what is he doing here and then the teacher who approached him asks him if he wanted to talk to him. Jiwen tells him that he is here because one of his friends lives here and then he tells him that he came here to hang out with his friend. The teacher then tells him not to stay out too late and then says bye to him. Then Kru asks Jiwen who was and Jiwen tells him that it is their Korean teacher and he says that he is very lit. Then Kru asks Juwen if he is their homeroom teacher who doesn't give a crap about his students and then Juwen tells him that he is not one of them and then he tells him that his class is class 4. Then Juwen says to Kru that why doesn't he asks him for help and then Kru says to him that he guesses that he is right and if only it was that easy then bullying would disappear from the face of the earth overnight. Juwen says to Kru that he doesn't have any idea what should he do and then Kru tells him that in episode 2 of Maria from the Sky there is this scene where Jin, the big talking swordsman is surrounded by demons and they are jeering at his weakness when he says and suddenly Juwen interrupts and says that the weaks have their own way of fighting. Then Kru happily says to him that he knows it and Juwen says to him that he saw the few first episodes as he wouldn't shut up about it. Kru asks him if he was that bad and then Juwen tells him that Jin makes an impassioned speech about the noble character of the night and then challenges the demon king to the duel. Then he suddenly throws a smoke bomb Maria gave him and runs away. After listening to this Kru says that now that is what he calls heart-pounding action. Then Juwen asks him if he is trying to tell him to do whatever it takes as the weak have their own way of fighting but there is something fundamentally wrong with that. It assumes that the weak can even fight. And then he says that the weak's way of fighting is self-contradictory and then he says that the weak are weak precisely because they cannot fight. Then in the car. He opens his eyes and listens to everyone shouting that the monster is coming inside the lounge. The monster gets in there and one of the ladies tries to open the door to run away. But the monster stands right behind her and says that it once heard when humans panic. They cannot even do something as simple as opening the door and then it says that it guesses it is true. The monster says that humans are so weak that it is pathetic and then throws the lady out of the door. Then it says to other people in there to escape two one by one in an orderly fashion. However, no one comes forward so the monster asks them if they didn't hear her and it calls them a pathetic useless pile of protein trash. Then the monster asks them who was the little insect who was screaming at the top of his lungs and then picks one of them and asks him if it was him. Then the monster says that it hates the little noisy punks like them and then it says that let them see if this shuts him up. It grabs her tightly by the neck and then throws it away and then everyone starts to scream for help. Then the monster says that it is tired of this life and sees Juwen pointing his shotgun at her and then he says to her that it is not only the one who is tired of this life and then he tells it that he is also tired of his life too. He asks it again if it hears him and then calls it a pile of protein trash. 